Hey, what's going on everyone? This is your Shirley back with another video and today we're going to be doing the tier list for version 1.0 and this is a pretty exciting time for Predator. So this is the official launch. We're finally on the 1.0 version of Predator. So it's a very exciting time ahead of us and with exciting times brings in new players into the community. So I'm actually going to be doing a tier list video a little bit earlier in the past than I normally do because I'm pretty confident that a lot of new players join in and they're like very kind of lost they want to know like what heroes are easy to use what heroes are very good etc etc right so i kind of want to get on top of updating my tier list for um 1.0 patch and kind of give you guys my opinion on um, where this kind of meta is at the moment and speaking of the which this is just my opinion at the end of the day don't take this like tier list like super super seriously um because this can be a lot of different opinions um some heroes will definitely like change over the place depending on who you're talking to right but i try to make a tier list that is as unbiased as i can and i try to base it off of kind of like what i observe and what's actually happening in like weight games especially like what kind of heroes are being picked the most what heroes are being banned the most etc etc right and another thing is that even though you see like a hero that you think is really fun and i put them in like d2 don't let me t um dissuade you from like trying to heal out because at the end of the day if you're here to play Pred and have fun definitely don't let tier lists um get to you like too seriously hard right but to kind of explain the tier list i kind of got set up we got s was must pick or ban a is always strong b is great picks c average performance d situation picks and then i got this one tier here a to d which is only for one trick this is the kind of like heroes that i think are like really strong in the right hands but can also be pretty weak if you have someone that's not familiar with that hero at all and especially when i'm talking about a tier list that's going to be more kind of catered towards like the kind of like the average kind of joe i kind of want to have this tier list to kind of better like separate out some of these heroes out and then the f tier is going to be the rest in peace tier right so yeah, it's kind of interesting that um, Wink is now kind of like every day. It's not exactly 24-7, but it kind of feels like that because we got Wink just going on like constantly during like the active hours, right? But Wink is still kind of like, I would say kind of green, th green thumb kind of fresh kind of new still and i say that because like the different ranks um you have in like a uh, predator so it's bronze silver gold plat diamond and then paragon which is like the equivalent of like grandmaster and quote unquote for like league of legends for example right and so with that said if you go to like if you're able to like grind rank a whole lot and because of the part that you're actually in platinum three you're already like top 200 easily in this entire game right and that's kind of why this tier list i'm going to try to cater towards more like the gold kind of players because top 200 people um like that's just such a small small percent of the whole predator population right so i kind of want to make a tier list that has some like that kind of high elo kind of like stuff placements but also trying to like really be mindful of like that most people that are watching this video are probably going to be the ones that are going to be in gold or silver right where most people are at still because rank is still very kind of fresh right so with that, all of that said and done let's jump straight into the tier list and the first here we're going to be talking about is of course sinks and she's like the newest hero she's a support hero a lot of people have been trying out in mid lane um your surely has also tried out off lane with actually great decent success all things considered why right? um but i'm actually gonna put sinks in the s tier and let me kind of explain this a little bit because whenever a new hero comes out for predator so i always try to be a little bit careful of getting too excited by a new hero release but like and be like this hero is actually insane. She has so much potential. S tier immediately, right? I try to be careful whenever I consider putting um, heroes in S tier because, of course, a lot of opinions and meta will sway um, pretty fast depending on if people can figure out the hero, right? But the main reason why I'm putting her s and why it might su surprise you guys because i think if you talk to most content creators most streamers they're gonna be like yeah Sinx is strong but i think she's more like a a or b pick not like a necessarily an s tier kind of pick why but like here's the thing that i kind of noticed when it comes to like metas and like new hero releases whenever like a new hero releases for um predator most people are very careful about the opinions or in the sense that like they go for the safe 
opinions. They're going to be like, yeah, new hero, definitely strong, but I'm not going to say S pick white. And like, there's a, there's a lot of different symbols I can give white. Where like, for example, Cyrus, when he first released, people are like, yeah, this guy is average performing. He's kind of like, uh, he's not great at all. Then flash forward like a month, and then all of a sudden people are saying that, oh my god, it's OP. He's going to be the most banner pick hero and competitive play. When in reality, he didn't got buff and nerve, it's just people just figure out how to play him. And then the more recent examples of War and Terror, people are like, yeah, I think War and Terror is like great picks. They're good, but they're not like always must pick a ban. And then now you have Terror that's always pick or ban even after the nerves. And you got World War II, like both of them are like the were the most pick or ban heroes every single game in the last competitive tournament for um, Prayer Desert, right? So there's, there's, there's a pattern that I just kind of know that kind of happened when new hero releases and that is people are always going to do the safe option, go B, and then once people figure out how to play the hero, someone's going to be like, yeah, that's pretty good to pick, everyone's going to ban back on it, and now all of a sudden this hero is like S2 pick, but only after two weeks when people figure out how to play it, right? I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit on that like waiting period and then I'm gonna just say straight up I think six is of the being the SEO pick and there's a lot of different reasons for that. Um for one big thing I can say though on Sinks is that already I'm starting to notice that high elo players are always picking or banning her. I think Terror is like the most banned hero at the moment still, but like if Terror's not getting banned, it's either like Sinks or like Drongo right now. Like people are actually starting to recognize the value and the threat of the Sinks pick already. Like she is just a support hero hero that you can call her the jack of all trades and then master of almost everything and what i mean by that is she there's a lot of stuff that things can do very 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 well because first of all her healing is actually pretty dang good why right? it's not going to be as crazy like as a knob by killing the entire team but if you see someone's half hp you look at them press right click and all of a sudden you're gonna see the um, health just go way back up. Like her burst healing is actually super super good and of course that healing is like very good in the laning phase so like um, regardless of the match you're going against, things can keep your ADC very healthy throughout the lane phase as long as um, they don't die merely in the all-out exchange, right? There's also the fact that she also has a lot more damage and okay compared to other support heroes. Like Decker is a hero that's always been super popular in rank, always hovering SOA uh, for the fact that like she does so much damage, right? But Sinks can also do that amount of damage too, like and she even has like the damage capabilities to actually kind of solo like Amy carries early on due to the fact that her R and B applies a DOT damage onto them and that DOT stacks, not refresh, it stacks the more basic attacks you land on them. So her damage early game is very deceptively high and that makes her like a very very strong like lame bully, right? So she has a really good healing kit, she has a very strong early game kit that's bully, has solo kill potential but also good damage throughout the course of the game. And then the third is the fact that she of course has a very strong stun with the Q. The Q takes a little bit of time getting used to but when you land that directly on someone, they are stunned for over a second solid, right? And then like late game, if you have an ADC that's stunned for over a second, they are just gonna die immediately because they just can't do anything, right? And not only that, that stun ricochets. So if you throw that stun now, when people are, when the enemy teams clump up together, now all of a sudden you're gonna be studying multiple people and it's delayed too. So it's kind of like very good at disrupting enemies um, from like going too hard in teamfight. You throw that stun now and then all of a sudden you just get stunned. You're like, what the heck is going on? and then it's going to be very like chaotic very messy that like things can put that way and just like on top of that too fourth thing she has like very good peeling for herself like that good support again very notorious for being a very slippery support character but you have things over here that like as long as she can get her passive um movement speed up that gives you a huge burst of movement speed. You, like, if you ever play against the Sinks or you play Sinks yourself, you'll be surprised to see the amount of times you can, like, get your movement speed activated on your passive and just walk away because that is such a huge burst of movement speed um, that can really just get you to kai away from people. You go really aggressive on the trading pattern and dual lane, get your passive um, speed up. You can easily use that passive speed to keep chasing and go for a kill or just use that as a way to immediately back off and they just can't chase you, right? Like, I just keep, keep I can 
keep going on and on. I haven't even talked to the, about the fifth thing. She has that revive on the ultimate. And guess what? That revive on the ultimate is extremely potent. I know some people are still a little bit lukewarm about it. But again, I think her ultimate has so, so much potential. And like when you use it right, it is so, so strong. Because it essentially acts kind of as a stasis in the sense that like the that stasis I am familiar in this epoch is really strong uh, because it gives you team time to help you follow up like you can go in really hard mid laner um do your ultimate stasis so they can't punish you then your team comes in and then by the time stasis is over you're in a safe spot right now imagine that but you put that on someone that's going to come across in themselves into the back line they go for the kill and usually they're going to die afterwards but then you put the revive on them they get revived your team follows up and now that person that should die um is now alive again and they're gonna not gonna die immediately right of course, there are counterplay to her ultimate shirt, but like I think you see most of the counterplay to ultimate when her ultimate is being used badly, right? When the ultimate is being used very well in team fight, it's gonna be really hard to actually capitalize and punish the person that's being revived off, right? So I mean, like all in all, she kind of has a kit that just does everything. Like you look at Phase or Nabi, she play for the healing. Well, things have that. Okay, you look at like Decker and Bellica, you play for the stun damage. Well, things has that. Like, things kind of just does it all right now. There's no obviously like big, big weakness that things have right now. And that is one reason, and that's the main reason why I'm putting on S tier pick. And that is why she's right now in like higher elos of wing, she's always like must pick or ban right now. So I highly encourage that even for new players, I think things is going to be like a really good support um, character for you guys to try out and play because she kind of has like everything you want in a support kit while having the damage. So if you have to carry your lane, you can do that with the things kind of support kind of kill too, right? So that's my whole spleel on like things and why I think she's S tier pick. Um, before I jump through the rest of the um, heroes, I'm gonna just do some highlights. Um, what I think are some really notable like mentions for like this 1.0 release. And we're gonna talk about the Ceres and Terra pick. Um, because last patch, um, Ceres and Terra were the most pick or banned hero in every single ranked game. And it was kind of ridiculous. I kind of hated it because I'm offlane main. I both love Zeros and Terror, and I have two very strong offlanes I just can never play because they're always getting um, banned or pick, right? Now fast forward um, to this patch world. I tried to nerf both of them directly because they were just like terrorizing ranked game. They tried to turn them back a little bit, right? But I can say with confidence that both of them are still S2 pick because at this present moment still, people are always just picking or banning them at the moment. I think I'm seeing a lot more serious bans than terror bans. I think um, last patch, it was kind of split between the two, um, but now it's a lot still more in favor of the serious ban, right? And I guess to kind of highlight why I think serious is like still like an always pick or ban kind of hero, I'm gonna kind of like compare him to like other junglers right now because we're gonna because Sarah is obviously like a very strong offlaner but I think the reason why he's getting banned the most comes in his jungle role right and I'm gonna do the comparison between Chimera and Rampage because both Chimera and Rampage actually got buffed like Rampage actually feeling really good right now it got the health scaling on this E got buffed to his ultimate Rampage is feeling like actually like a really strong tank jungler right now so much so that I think he's, he's an A pick right now and he's already getting pick up a lot in rank not necessarily ban right but he's getting pick up a lot in rank and for any newer players if you want just a kind of straightforward tank hero in the jungle world that's also kind of strong and when page is like the five by far the best one to pick up right and i know chimera got buffed too but um here's like the thing that kind of separates all 3d heroes right chimera easy to play um kind of hero has a lot of um high single target damage great early clears very healthy clears with this um sustained passive but that's kind of where it ends why right? he's kind of like a selfish jungler he doesn't provide so much like crazy stuff in team fights he's just a hero that just does really good early to make game pressure and then kind of falls off late game by right? so so you don't so although like what i think chimera is like a is a good pickup option in the jungle role i think he doesn't offer that very fireball utility that uh, most people are looking forward to in, in the ranked games why right? 
and then you go look at Rampage that um not gonna have as high of a damage but it's gonna be so much harder to kill with his ultimate he has so much more mobility to come in with his, his leap especially when you leap um during his ultimate insta stun on his Q um stun right and that means that um you can like stun people out of the ultimates like Gideon like Rampage has a lot more that utility and like team value than Chimera and that's why he's being valued a lot right now rank and that's why he's a pick right so you got like not really team value you got more team value and then you go s2 with Aceris and he has still has one of the best team values in the entire game for the jungle roster and that is his cage they nerfed his um ultimate and so it has increased cooldowns early game but it still doesn't matter why right? it still um, doesn't like stop the fact that sales can one that you do if they don't have blink sales cage them they're stuck in the cage dv2 dual lane dies just as simple plain as that right and so like his cage is just like so 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 valuable for like the team and it's very strong when you put in the jungle wall because every time you go against someone if, if they don't have a blink or have a mo movement ability to get them out of the cage they're literally just stuck there and they're gonna like die 10 out like 9 10 out of times right so like even though he got nerfed he still like game pick or ban every single rank game because like that cage is still really really nerdy right and then we got Taylor right here where like um she's like her jungle role is still very good but like for her she's still very good in the offering role mo mostly right because she, she still like is a huge early game bully and we still like she's still that hero that is just um CC immune when she uses the ultimate and then that is just such a strong strong ability again like that's it's kind of like the sales cage it's very very strong so unless you got his ultimate super hard it's, it's always going to make the kill this strong and the same thing for Terra unless you got her number super super hard she's her ultimate is going to be super strong because she can just completely like counter a lot of different heroes in this meta or rather a lot of he, um, team comp try to CC targets um to get kills or to win team fights Terra just ignores that completely right so both Terra and Terra definitely S2 pick in my mind right here so one last um, mention I think I'm gonna do before I kind of like jump through the rest of the two lists. It's gonna be like um like the kind of like two AC placements. Why right? I still think that Drongo is S2 picks and Trimblast is definitely a very solid A kind of pick. Cause again, um Drongo was another ADC that's always pick or even banned. Like he's still banned right now even after the nerfs. Why right? and for and the reason why he's still being picked is because he still has a very good overall kind of excellent kit. Like having like that good self peel having that good sustain damage high burst damage and of course the silence grenade is just so so strong because when you can just silence anyone in that Q radius that's just gonna like completely counter some heroes like crunch right or even sinks he counts sinks because if sinks get the revive off an enemy hero well put the silence grenade on top of the person that's gonna revive now they get revived but the silence so they can't move immediately that makes it really easy to punish them right and you have Trim Lots over here that like his Inferno build that's being used a lot got nerfed but it's still like being picked up a lot just for the fact that he's just a very easy, very safe ADC to play. It's always going to be like a good ADC for ranked games because you can just kind of pick him to almost any matchup and he has some ability, long range kit to stay safe in lane regardless who he's facing by. So I think the best way to kind of explain this 1.0 patch is that um, they did definitely nerf some of the outliers, some of the really OP heroes, um, but they didn't really like went super ham on the buff besides maybe Rampage, which he was like a CD pick, not shot up straight to A, but I don't think it's necessarily an S tier pick at the moment, right? I think this is like a patch where like um, they kind of went a little bit safe on the meta in terms of like the buffs, nerf the balance, right? Because you don't want to like super buff or super nerf and now all of a sudden that like, hero is like unplayable. Like these two heroes, um, Terra, um, Sarah's, um, Drongo, they're like still S tier picks, nothing got changed. But now they're not going to be like way, way above like the A tier picks. Now the S and A picks 
this patch is definitely going to be closer, a lot closer um, right now, right? So I do think that even though the meta didn't change super drastically, I do think overall got much better because the allies definitely got weighing in a bit, right? So I do... I'm a big fan of this. Hopefully, we're going to see some more spicy changes in the next mountain patch in about like two weeks from now. But those are my highlights on this patch. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and see if we can like quickly just talk about all these individual heroes and where they're going to go and why. And the first one up is going to be Countess. Um, she did got like some quality of life stuff on the on B um, with the like the mana cost being reduced, right? But I still think she's kind of like Ash average performance hero she's an assassin a very scaling assassin but she's also a very easy assassin to shut down the early game because she has low mobility so offlane roll like her offlane roll is not bad but it can be easy to punish if you really want to bully that kill to it right main lane roll again it's not bad but it can be easy punishable jungle roll is something somewhat like a little bit easier to kind of play the scaling game right but she's competing with a lot of different junglers right now like the rampage the sailors the terror like she's she has so much competition there that she doesn't really stand out really particularly super well so that's why i'm going to put in c pick here for now Crunch, he's actually a kind of solid great pick um, right here. Um, he's actually getting a lot more popular in offlane especially. Like I see a lot of high elo offlaners like playing Crunch a lot. I don't think he necessarily like just going to be like an A pick. You can probably argue for that. And the reason why I'm kind of putting him a little bit is because I think he's kind of like a hero that is kind of easy to play. But like for some reason, he doesn't always click for everyone, right? Like if we talk about Grux, Everyone can play Grux. It's just hold down left click, see people just die like over time, right? Grunge is someone that you have to put a lot more thought into it and have a lot more time with him, right? So like, he's kind of like a hero that um, it's not gonna be one you just want to pick up just because I'm um, blindly and just hope for like good results immediately, right? It's kind of like a hero that you play him because you're playing for a specific reason and as you want to kind of win the offlane and then you want to go carry the game for your team, right? So I don't think he's like a if you're not picking him for that reason, I don't think it's gonna be like an A pick, right? Because if you want to picking a better offering that's going to help better support your team a little bit more consistently i think there are better options than him right now decker she's going to go s2 pick right here um she hasn't really like changed super drastically um from what i can tell by playing her playing against her and seeing other people play her she's just still like a really solid support hero Especially if you're trying to like carry your games because she has the high damage. She of course has that like CC, CC and um, high mobility. She just has some very good like roams she can do. Like um, I think that is like one of the most popular supports when it comes to roaming to like offlane or mid lane and then try to get the stun damage off the enemy team and try to get the kill for your laner, right? So you can never go wrong with Decker. Um, and I think she's a hero that even newer players can kind of get into not too badly at all. Fain Mao, he's going to go into the A to D or only for one trick. Uh, Fain Mao is actually doing much better right now on this patch. Like a lot more people are eager to try him out in ranks like an offlane and jungle especially. But I still think he's only for like one trick in the sense that like it's really easy to mess up with Fain Mao. If you dash him when you're not supposed to dash him. You die immediately, right? Um, and not only that, like for him, for you to really just be able to hard carry your games with him, you have to be very good and know the limits of this character, like know the execution thresholds, what will like get people low, what will not get people low, right? So even though I think he's doing like much better, like can definitely argue like an A or B pick in the hands of like a very good player, I, I think that Davis Joe is not going to be able to pile this hero super well, they might as well just go like the Chimera Rampage pick instead. Gadget, uh, she's a great pick. Um, there's a lot of like actual competition in the mid lane, um, and Gadget used to be like a pick and slow slightly borderline s2 pick because it, it was a real kind of meta at some point where a lot of millions got gutted pretty hard like the um bellica for example and that made gadget more popular not popular not necessarily because her kit was like got super strong in by herself it's more the fact that other mages were struggling and gadget was actually 
driving so people are really um, picking up a lot right but right now other majors a lot of majors right now overall are actually doing decently well and i kind of make schedule not shine as much as it used to be so i will put in b pick um she has good pokes she has like a very good tesla done for team fights but she's not like super crazy in terms of like standing out in the mid lane roster at the moment uh, speaking of uh, staying on the mid lane watch, so we have Gideon and he's still an S2 pick in my mind. Um, he's definitely not super absurd in terms of like damage and him just kind of like pressing ultimate and then getting a pencil kill with that kind of thing. But he's still the safest laner um, to put in mid lane. Like he has counter matchups for sure. Like I don't think he does as good as to like the gadget or like how it's it. Um, but I think right now mid lane is kind of like a rock paper scissors kind of lane where it's like all the majors are good right but it just depends on which mage better counts the other one at the moment right so if you kind of ignore that fact and look at the individual kits um Gideon is definitely super super safe you can blind pick him and have an easy lane because it's going to be just almost impossible to kill you unless you're super super ex extended or you don't have your um e teleport right and then in team fights of course your ultimate is just super super strong with testing objectives or going for those wombo combos like um kills right so i think that game is just like a very very good um mage and perfect for um new players especially so i'm just gonna put him as to pick right here next up is gonna be graystone and i'm gonna put him in c for ash performance he's kind of like one of the probably the easiest um heroes to play besides like um grux unfortunately he's kind of not in the best spot meta wise because in offlane it's really hard to play him offlane because there's a lot of really good offlaners or rather there's a lot good offlaners that can excel in short trades and Greystone can never excel in short trades and that's kind of like the name of the game in offlane is being able to use your abilities kit well in the short exchanges like use the ability hit your opponent back off and do rinse and repeat and then now you can go for the kill but Greystone doesn't have that he's very committal when it does a trade if you're going for a trade with Greystone, that's gonna be five seconds and that's gonna be really hard to find five seconds where it's actually good for you whereas like grux say with um crunch they press one ability they do th their damage they back off and that takes less than a second to do right so Greystone off lane is kind of like a hero that like you hit six and the only way you can play that lane after six is you literally just always try to all in on your opponent and if, because if you don't you're just going to get poked out of lane and you're just going to be sad Greystone why right? so his more popular pick at the moment is actually going to be jungle and like he's actually pretty good in jungle like don't get me wrong I think the issue with him in jungle is just like now there's a lot more competition now right because Kame got better you can definitely he's a more safer consistent option than Grayson sometimes. Rampage is super good in the jungle. Sailors is because Booker in the jungle. Terror is good. Quan's good. There's a lot of really good junglers right now. So Grayson doesn't really stick out um with all the junglers. So I think he's just a kind of see pick. But of course like new player He's perfect for new players, don't let me dissuade you from that. But just know that as you kind of climb more and more, at least in this meta, Greystone is going to be a little bit more harder to pull off compared to some of the other junglers or offense right now. Grux, and he's, he's going to obviously go for a pick. He's kind of like the pit hero that I always kind of put him in like a pick because I don't know why. It's been like one, two years and people still struggle to play against it. Grux because Grux is just have a very easy straightforward kit your goal is to get on top of people and just basic attack basic attack basic attack oh they're dead cool right because Grux is kind of like that early game hero especially in offlane that he just doesn't lose long trades at all the only way you can beat Grux out is if you can somehow w win the short trades back away melee and don't get caught up in the long um trades with Grux like he's the hero that can be actually easy for experienced players like myself to counter and especially to like punish early game but for more like the average kind of joke character like for like um gold players grux is actually very very strong right now like i mean even in high elo he's still pretty dang popular because he can he has some pretty dang good matchups against some of the meta picks like the um terror or like the series right so 
I think Grox is like just in a really good spot. I'm just not putting him in S2 pick only because that like he does get hard countered by certain teams or certain like um, heroes. Like if you're going against like Rick the Steel, um, going against like CCCC, you don't get to play the game, right? If you don't, then you get to thrive. So I think he just have, have a big count hard time dealing with like all cc but outside that he's like a very very good hero and he's my personal recommendation for new players to play because he's like the strongest and easiest character for new players to get into next up is going to be howitzer and he's going to go in a pick he's actually very very good right now like he's like a very popular mage in the last competitive tournament and for good reason too why right? it's kind of like the game where it's like a very safe laner but he has to kind of commit his ultimate or use very good um e placements right but he's a lane bully he has very good dueling potential 1v1 kind of kill potential the only reason why i'm not putting in like s pick necessarily because like he kind of like doesn't have great like utility overall for a mage right because when you think of mages you think of like aoe crowd control kind of stuff right and um, and how also it's very heavy single target focus which is not bad per se right but sometimes your team comp needs like that big aoe like the gideon on the gadget or iggy right and if you don't have that aoe like damage threat um sometimes people can just run your team down, go really fast, and it's really hard for Howitzer to respond to that, right? Like, Howitzer is a, a, is a mage that does best when he can, like, keep poking down people individually, go for solo picks, right? Because as soon as the big team fight breaks out, there's only so much Howitzer can do to, like, help his team out, right? Whereas if a big team fight breaks out, Gideon, Gadget, like, Iggy, they can do a lot of stuff, like, to respond to all of that very well right so that's kind of why i'm putting a take you can argue it's s2 pick right but i don't want to put every single mage in s2 pick because a lot of majors that you can argue for s pick right now they're just all very strong at the moment Chloe, um she's gonna be just only for like one tricks category always has been like kind of like a slippery assassin i would say like kind of like the same situation as Faye Mal where like one mistake will just cost you a life and then for Chloe like it's just even easier to like see that happening a lot more because Faye Mal still has very nice mobility overall on this RMB but Chloe is like if she gets caught out or stunned she just dies immediately you have to play a very 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 good to be able to see a lot of like ton of fire out of her and I think right now especially it's a little bit rough for the play her because some of the tanks like Rampage, Victor, all like the tanks are just doing better overall because Fire Blossom got buff and so you're gonna see more tanks being played and Kawhi doesn't like playing into tanks so she's gonna have a little bit rough of the time trying to find ways to like play into better team cons for herself. Next up is going to be Kira. I think she's going to be A2 pick. A uh, very good single target damage, of course. Um, she also has a dash, so like it makes it really easy to play her in the sense that she can be very safe to play in lane. She can also use that dash to get really aggressive to go for the kills, right? I think the one thing that she kind of struggles the most with, though, however, is her wave clearing. Sometimes you're going to see Kira use the ultimate to clear the wave, which looks very strange, but that's what people have to do sometimes if they want to, like, actually push the wave fast enough to go pressure at the towers, right? So it's kind of like a main weakness, but if she didn't have that main weakness of that wave clear, then she would have been, like, really busted because everything, everything that else about her kids like very very good right so she, she's like just a really solid like pick up adc safe to play like the trim last right here next up is bellica i'm gonna put in d pick i actually don't think she's like bad necessarily like her but she was like really bad at one point right um, but her bus is feeling better right the reason why i'm putting this session in pick though is because i kind of feel like there are better mages more consistent mages to play the only the main reason why you pick Bellica is because her Q knockup stun is just so so potent in team fights, and that's so strong to the point that she is actually a solid support at times because of her Q knockup. But aside of her Q knockup, she just is kind of like a average kind of mage, I would say. Like there are other mages that can do better burst damage, better single target focus than her. I would say like she is always just kind of lacking in the, in the damage department. I you compared to other mages right so that's why i think she's situational i think some team she can work very well like if you have like a, like a very assassin like oriented kind of team calm right then you then your knockup can be really good because you set up like some really nice kills for like your assassins or high damage dealers but 
aside of that, I don't think she's going to be performing as good as some of the other mages at the moment. Mogish, um, she's going to go into the great pick category. I would say that she's actually like one of the most popular mages to pick if you don't play mid, because Mogish is a very easy kill to play. Because you press right click, that it doesn't miss, and you just get instant fire, instant damage on your opponent, right? So she's a very easy mage to play, like very easy to execute kit. She actually does a lot of like high single target damage. The main weakness though for her, of course, is her low mobility and low range. So she kind of lacks that utility um, that like a gadget house can provide in like long range ability or like stun setups, right? Um, so I would say that Mogish is someone that can help you carry the um when you're playing the game for the f very first time. Like new players will love Mogish. Um, but as you play, as you climb more and more and more, high elo players not necessarily always gonna like Mogish because she's just someone that can be really easy punishable, and that's why I think she's gonna be in the B pick right here. Murdoch, he's also a great pickup right here. A lot, a lot most ADCs are doing fine at the moment. Why? Right? I just don't think he really stands out necessarily. I kind of look at Trim Last Stronger keyword. They kind of stand out a bit more than like a Murdoch in my opinion. They kind of have a little bit more utility or like their consistency. The main value of like Murdoch is his global snipe. So you can you can use that as a way to um get kills across the map and always have that global pressure right because for the good Murdoch players what they do is like um they look at like offlane like fighting they're both one hp you can go either way and Murdoch just snipe comes in and secures that la last hit right like his he his ultimate is very good at comboing um with people across the map he's trying to give more kills like and more snowballing right but besides that doesn't really stand out super hard like i kind of feel like he he loses out in the single target damage that like a kiva or jungle provide by uh he has really nice like self peel um right but it's not as straightforward and like as mobile as like a trim last fight so it kind of does a bit of everything good but nothing like super super stellar in my book Mayo, she's gonna go to the AD pick. Um, she's like she's a support that has a easy kit at first glance, but like to take full advantage of it, um, you have to like really really know the hero in and out. And what I mean by that is like her ultimate is a global ultimate, like kind of like a global ultimate. Like the Murdoch itself, her is like a global ultimate that save any ally she wants across the map. And the thing about ultimate is it's such a powerful like ultimate, but only if you use it right. You don't want the just all people just because you see them low HP. You want the old people you know you can save or use it on people that are worthwhile saving. Why? Right? Like you shouldn't use your ultimate to save the ADC that's 0 and 8. They're not going to carry the game. You're going to use your ultimate to save the 6 and 1 female offline that's carrying the game, right? And that's kind of how you want to play her. Like you have to be very conscious about who's your win condition. Not only that, but she has a lot of opportunities where she can like split push um, with the team. Like her team can go mid, she can split push on the side because as soon as the team fight breaks out, she just ults to them immediately, right? So there's a lot of like macro, micro stuff that's going on with me that she's not as like as a straightforward support hero um, than I would like her to be for new players especially. So I think she's kind of like a pick that you want to pick her if you're like very, very dedicated to playing her whole turn. No bash. Um, he's gonna be average performance right here. His healing is like good, right? It's not like stellar. Is the thing like especially with Sinks' release, where like she has very good burst healing to like make one ally HP go from half to like almost full with a single on B Y. Like that's like very strong because you get that health back immediately. Whereas like No Bash heal is very like slow and steady so if someone is like half hp and you're trying to heal them they can just die still within seconds the only way you can get so much value from your healing is if they can live a long time and right now tanks are doing better so you're gonna see more tank picks they're not gonna die immediately so you can get, you're gonna see a little bit more value in your healing on that but i think like again with Six's release you have a lot more competition when it comes to the healing department and then like if you just now look at the healing um, of Narbash and Sinks and look at Sinks. She has way more utility than like a Narbash provides, right? So I think overall Narbash is like a good healing support, but that's just where it kind of stops. He's just a good healing support. He has like good 
like AOE movement speed, he has a, a solid dunk, but like as support, it's kind of like does some of the stuff just better than him, or they have a lot more utility baked into the kits than like a Nod Bash, right? So the only way I can see Nod Bash like going high in the tier list if his group healing becomes much stronger, right? It becomes to the point that he can just heal so much so fast, right now he's not really doing that. Next up is going to be Faze, she's going to be a situa situational pick. Um, her healing is not bad, kind of like the Nod Bash, but she doesn't have a whole lot like utility like even less utility than the not bash overall because she's very like dedicated to one person versus not bash utility can affect the whole ent entire team right so when you're picking phase you're only picking her to combo with certain acs or certain like um teammates right for example putting her and chimera it's, it's actually a very good combo putting her and sparrow is a very good combo but if you don't have those very good combos then there's really no point in my eyes of picking up phase right here Revenant, he's actually going to go to C pick. He's actually doing a bit better. A lot more people are actually playing him. But I haven't seen anything still crazy out of him. Like, he still has, like, good burst damage potential for sure. He has, like, good late game potential for sure. Right, but I think ADC is overall, like, most of them are actually doing pretty dang good. Um, and especially, like, some of these ACs, even if they're behind, they can quickly catch back up or they have ways to still like be a threat in team fights even when behind. Revenant is a hero that's like if he's behind he's really really struggling. It's really hard for him to come back when he's behind. It's very like a snowballing kind of AC. If you don't snowball with him you're gonna struggle with him right. So it's kind of like a lack of consistency I would like for the ADC pick and that's why I'm putting him like after average performance right here. Victor, he's gonna go to AD pick only for one tricks. Um, like he's just he he is of course like the hook hero. Like you play him to hook people. Very very strong like ability for like just gain like picks off and like team fights or in lane. The issue with Victor is that like if you don't land your hooks consistently, his performance can really fall off super super hard. So I think he's a hero that. You're going to see a ton of fire from him, only if you play him a whole ton and can land those hooks consistently. Sarah's um, just going to go with average performance. Um, her offlane jungle wall is not bad, but kind of like the Grey Sun, they don't really stand out super hard. Like, maybe you can put in B because she has a little bit more better carry potential, a bit more consistent way to snowball than some of the heroes in this tier. But I, I kind of feel like she's not really like sticking out like super super well compared to like these offers the junglers there's like w there's a lot of really strong offers of junglers and there was doesn't exactly stick out or stand out um maybe like positively right so if you're playing her jungle you don't have anyone else to play then yeah play her for sure right but i think like some of these picks like the rampage jungle or like the grux offering they're gonna be easier they're gonna be like offered more consistently than like a serious way right? so again only for one trick he's he's the scaling tank but he can only scale if he can last have your ability as well and that's definitely an anti-friendly kind of hero um right so you can't you you want a new player to play this hero because he he's gonna <laughs> really struggle for new players not being the last hit and get his stacks off well so if you can last hit very well and get your stacks maxed out um within like 20 25 minutes then he's gonna feel really good otherwise there are better tanks to play right now, especially with Rampage coming into the scene. Shinbi, she's gonna be a situational pick. Um, just a dedicated split pusher, not really a popular jungler at the moment, I would say. So, um, you're only gonna see Shinbi really playing off lane, um, right? And you do see her play off lane, she's only gonna split push. And having a hero that only does split pushing and doesn't really rotate the team fights can really make for some awkward situations. Well, you don't want to pick a Shinbi if you need to play an off laner that can rotate the team fights, right? So, only pick her if your team can allows a dedicated split pusher in that game. Still, great pickup option right here. Um, you can maybe argue for him to go into like A right here, but I think like he's starting to slowly become like a little bit of a jack of all trades kind of a character where like he's good at support, but I think there are better supports than right now. Like he's good in offlane, but I think there's better offlanes right now 
But at the same time, he's just a very safe option. Even He's like one of the best tanks that can play from behind because you'll dare to just knock people up at the end of the day and just CC people constantly. So I think Steel is just a very safe hero, but he's not exactly like super dominant or he's, he's not super like top three and need a supporter offering at the moment. Faye, uh, she's going to be a situational pick. Um, mainly to the fact that her ultimate, while very powerful, is easily like countable because either you blink out, dash out of her ultimate, or you just cleanse it, right? And if you don't get your ultimate fire off and pull people in, you're going to see her fire just dip super, super hard, right? Not only that, there are certain heroes you just don't want to play Fairy into, like a Chimera or a Tail with their kind of CC immunity or cleanse. So only pick Fairy. If you're going against a good team comp, you can kind of kite out, or you're going against a team comp well, you feel like you can consistently get your ultimate off on them without them like cleansing or being able to get out of it. Spell is just going to be a situation to pick. Highest DPS potential, but. Her potential to be like camp and like die a lot is very high also because she has no mobility at all. Every almost every ADC um has a way to like self peel or be able to like get out of situations. Even Webnet can use ultimate to get out of ganks. Spare has nothing to get out safely. She gets dove on, she's kind of screwed, right? But a her damage is still very, 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 very good for ADC. So if she doesn't like die immediately in team fights, she can really just get solid win team fights just due to the wall DPS she's outputting, right? So I think you're gonna only play spell against team comps that you feel like you can like be safe against, or you have like a face support that can be like your personal body guard and point pull you pull you safely every single time. Next up is going to be Wraith, again only for one tricks, if you don't land your combos on your abilities, your damage is going to fall through the ground, but um, if your damage is, but if you can land all your combos consistently well on him, he's actually going to be pretty dang good, not, he's not really like a really popular mid lane, he's more like an ADC kind of pick nowadays, and even if you can land your combos like very good on him, you lose out on the sustained damage that the other traditional carries um, bring to the table, right? Iggy, he's, he's a really solid A pick right now for like mid lane. Um, very easy kind of kit to play in the sense that like his turns lock on to enemies for you. Big, a lot of big AOE. He can choose objectives early because he has some of the highest objective damage in the game. He melts tanks and that makes him even better too because tanks are doing better to be being picked more. But that makes Iggy shine a bit more because he, he is a tank treader, right? His ganks are not the best. So like he's very much like a scaling mid laner, just keep pushing on the lane. Doesn't really help out the silence as much as you would like. So um, be in, be mindful of why you're picking Iggy for certain re reasons. If you need to pick a mage that can kind of carry team fights a bit more or like gank a, a lot more aggressive other game, Iggy is not your duo to play right here. Juan, he's gonna go in the great picks category right here. He's always been like a super, super good heal like overall, but I think like he's starting to slowly fall off now. Um, and it's a, there's a couple of reasons for it. One is the fact that his late game is not the greatest. It kind of falls off pretty fast once you hit that late game kind of point. Um, because he's not the best like tank late game. He's not the best bruiser late game. Like he doesn't really excel like late game compared to some of these other heroes so you're playing for more like the early to mid and you don't get a lead early to mid game and you fall behind that's where Quan can really kind of stop the struggle a bit but it's still like a really great pickup um for sure though and like offlane right not like not so much like jungle but definitely offlane is like very good um but i think like especially his kit is a lot more me mechanical like he's like he's kind of like a harder version of crunch like if you find crunch hard well you're gonna probably find Quan like even harder right and then you look at grux and you're like well i just hold left click with grux that's all i need to do right so that there's a lot of different reasons why uh, i think Quan is more like a great pick like for me like i would like Quan a lot i can like do very consistent well so he's more like an a pick for me but i think for more most players out there he's more like kind of like a b pick August, I'm actually gonna put him S pick right here. And like the reason why I put him S pick because it kinda is like the Gideon in the sense that like um 
not for like the Gideon, like Gideon, Gideon is like SP because like he has very strong team fighting, but it's also very safe, very elusive mage. Um, Arcus is SP in my opinion because he kind of has a lot of really good utility and he does very good sustain and burst damage. Like some of these mages, like Iggy, very good sustained damage, not so much burst damage all the time. How is it? Very good burst damage, not very good uh, sustained damage. Argus, he does both good single target and burst damage. And he has a lot of good utility with his Q stun, his E kind of like pull in, his long range snipe to like execute um, low targets from very far away. Like, he, the only thing about Argus though is that his early game is not like super great, but only because he went through his mana really fast if you spam your RB too much, right? So be a little bit careful when you're playing Argus and using his RB a whole lot. But once you get past the early game, get to mid to late game, that's not really of an issue. Like Argus is like surprisingly like really, really good if you get to like the mid game kind of point. And like right now, like he's actually a recommend here for support. And he wasn't always like that. Like he used to be only like mid lane kind of um recommend it right but now he's finally being recommended support because everyone kept playing to support he always have really great utility damage they kept nerfing him for support people still keep playing the main ways or maybe just kind of throw their hands up they gave up they're like okay fine we put him support well end of the day so i would say that for that fact also too that is also good in support role that definitely in my head puts him like an s2 pick right here all right aurora a pick um She's just still very good all around, like good in off lane. Her jungle is like the part where she shines the most because she has very fast clears with her high sustained damage. Um, she has very strong ultimate for team fights. Like she kind of does a lot of different stuff very, very well. The only thing that's frustrating about her is sometimes it can be hard to like get the kills to kill because um, she's kind of like a little bit slow and clunky um, with her like Q. Um, the direction you're going, trying to like root people, all that stuff. So, there are ways you can play around the world, right? But I think for the most part, often jungle, she's like super solid um, at the moment. Last but not least, we have Grim, and he's gonna go in the B pick category. Um, he's still very good ADC. Um, he's he's very unique because he is a magical based ADC, not like a physical based. Um, ADC, so he makes for more diverse, interesting team comps you can do. But it's also a double edged sword because if you have a clone offline or a jungle, don't pick Grim AC because you're all magical base, no physical, and it's going to be very easy for the enemy team to counter you, right? But outside of that, he does kind of open up more team comps to occur because um, of his magical base um, basic attacks. He has a very good spell shield, he has a very way good way to execute enemies from far with ultimate i think it's a little bit more medica mechanically driven kind of adc so it's, he's harder to play compared to like a trim must and kira so that's why i kind of put it down right here so even though i feel like his damage can like compete with these two i think he's hard to pull off and that can be something that can turn people off a little bit on him so um i think that's where he's gonna lie in my tier list right here but yeah that's gonna be if for this tier list a lot a lot longer video um, than i thought it's gonna be and i think i always say this i always try to make it my goal to make my tier list like a little bit faster try to get closer to more 30 minute tier list video not like a 50 minute tier list video but i guess i have a lot to say about different heroes i have a lot of explanations a lot of stuff i want to say and why and you guys seem to appreciate my in-depth explanations trying to like really explain every hero not trying to like Put one hero to move on to the next melee by. So, of course, if you have enjoyed today's video, consider hitting the subscribe button, liking this video. Uh, especially like doing that, it's gonna be very good because I'm gonna be going back and focusing up on my Coast Guard kind of stuff soon. So that means that my daily uploads is gonna be taking a break again soon. So if you want to be catching up to date with what you surely is doing and when i'm gonna be putting out a um, video for you guys definitely hit the subscribe button so you get that notification but my my thought is like dying right here so i'm sorry if my last 10 minutes has been kind of rough it's been really kind of hard to talk through the last 10 minutes so i'm just gonna end this video right here and really appreciate the love and support guys as always and i'll see you guys in the next one peace